When you hear the words in television, Amico, what are the first things that come to mind? What is the first thing that comes to mind? Yes, I know. Legacy. <laughs> Let me hit you with the intro. The Hello Humans podcast is sponsored by the Generation X eBay store. Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. You know, there's a lot of consoles out there. Anybody can make a console. What do they have? Games? Hardware? Haptic feedback like the PS5? Let me tell you something else. When you think about the Amico, what other console delivers mind games? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Mr. Guido has a history of bad takes. And what I'm going to show you here are his... Uh, the way he describes himself, if you will, you know, he thinks of himself as a a legend already. <laughs> Let me show you this. Principal software engineer at Intellivision. That means he's been late delivering his product now for two years. Yikes. Award-winning game developer, developer, producer, writer, and sound designer, composer, ebook guru. What? What? Yeah, jack of all trades. Wow. Impressive. Now, he wasn't, he's not one of the members of the uh, Avengers. I mean, now he's one of the members of the Suicide Squad <laughs> as they burn this project into the ground. But uh, let's listen to his words. This is uh, via the Reddit and television underscore Miko. I'll put a link down below to this. Uh, they actually put the post up here, but they condensed it in the bottom, guys. It's just easier to read. And more concise. So here we go. Uh, Guido Henkel today in the Facebook hug box. <laughs> Only if you're not listening to the entire message, right? The fact that we are still bela bela belaboring the point is proof that people are not listening. It's the customer's fault. The stones of these guys, they're, they're late, right? Two years, and it's still your fault. <laughs> We're not building a retro console. We never planned to make a retro console. We never said we were making a retro console. We never suggested we were making a retro console. What? We never suggested we were making a retro console. Who's this we? Maybe not you, but I can remember somebody that was sure suggesting and we'll get that to, to that later. Let's keep on reading here. We are very clear about it from day one that we were building a family entertainment experience that will bring people back together like back in the day. Well, that sounds a little retro, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, maybe the messaging, you know, because the whole not having a PR team, you know, like, OK. The problem is that people are only hearing what they want to hear. <laughs> you know, I've never read that in any business book. When you're having problems in a company, blame the customers <laughs> and project their expectations into it, making up half truths. <laughs> so they're <laughs> he's blaming the customers, and if they're making up half truths, they're making up half lies. Then too, right? Wow, wow, he's a people person. These then percolate through the community and suddenly become pseudo-facts. And if we're not adhering to these pseudo-facts, people are disappointed and upset because we're not doing what we promised. Again, who's this we people? When in fact, we never promised such any such thing. Oh, I think you are mistaken there, my friend. And then people wonder why we stop sharing information in public. End of PSA. Now, you, you would think that somebody that's late on a project two years and then has been paid for it already would have a better attitude. You think you'd be more graceful to the, to the public and the investors. No. This is the Amico. <laughs> We're in another dimension. Now, where would these people get these ideas from? Well, maybe not from him. But I remember one Tommy Tallarico starting off reading a bunch of games off at an event, right, when he first announced it. And they were all retro games, all of them. 
you know, you, you could see how people might have thought, you know, ah, maybe it's a retro console, you know, but uh, maybe they're just confused, right? But then he started talking, you know, in, in detail about games that he wanted to make, right? You know, some of them he didn't have a contract for, like Toll Jam and Earl, which, you know, seems pretty retro. But, you know, it gets even more confusing because then he promised work on E.T. Now, what the heck is more retro than E.T.? He wasn't even he was promising his fans that he was going to put them in the game and stuff. I mean, it, it's nuts. Work working on him on this game. Retro game from what? 19. <laughs> Jeez. But it's the customer's fault. Right, Guido? Well, let me show you why customers might be. You know, confused. I mean, there's games that are clearly modern, like, uh, I don't know, Finnegan Fox here. Let me do a close-up so you guys can see these better. And take a look at the artwork if you've never seen it. You know, kind of cartoony. Okay, this is not retro at all. This is a remake. We got you there. Then we got the shovelware hit, Brain Duel. Okay. Then this is where it starts getting confusing because you have Rigid Force Redux here with a retro-style cover. Hmm. The covers are just retro style, right? That's where people got it wrong, right? You have Dino Blasters, which is really just a, a knockoff of a of another retro game, right? Bomberman, but it's a customer's fault. Well, explain to me this, genius. Moon Patrol, the remake. Look at that cover art. Look at that. Retro. Is that not retro for a retro remake? The mind games. See, it's your fault. <laughs> He's got the money. He's late on all the projects, along with John Alvarado and all the other Alvarados, the ones that are related and not related. They have all the money, right? <sighs> but haven't delivered anything. Maybe they got confused because um, they saw this great artwork on Missile Command. This great retro artwork for a retro game. That's not going to be on a retro console. See, that's where you got it wrong. This is the mind game is part of the experience. What about a remake of an original and television game with beautiful artwork? You know, I really want that in a T-shirt. Uh, and they owe me a poster for this. You know, they never actually sent it to me. So, you know, I'm sad about that. No more Britney. No more backwards for Phil. And here, let me... Uh, Destroy his argument right here. Evil Knievel, a hero from the 1970s. It doesn't get more retro than the 1970s. We already took you to back 1980 with E.T. Now we're going back to the 1970s. Retro artwork and a retro game. But, uh, you know, he worked on a lot of shovelware for quite a few years after he, he wasn't uh, with the rest of the crew over there. So maybe that's where he got confused guys whatever you want to say about the amico fans and the people that cheer for this console is that they really know right one thing i can tell you they really know their games they will forget more about games than a lot of us will ever know specifically retro games they were being sold a retro console specifically because they were the target investor so now don't change the story my friend why don't you just deliver on what you're late on? You know, if anybody's in charge over there, <laughs> these are the kind of guys you don't want talking to the public, right? Telling the customers that they're wrong and they're making up half-truths, <laughs> a.k.a. half-lying, is not the best look for a company that has no money, has been late for two years, and hasn't produced anything. You think these guys would be a little bit more, more humble, specifically with their investors. Do you think the investors would have invested if they just knew it was shovelware? No. The disrespect and the mind games. Guys, that is the legacy of the Amico. Thank you for joining me. If you like this kind of video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. New videos every week. Make sure you don't miss out and subscribe.